Praise the Lord. We went live this week. Didn't have that technical problem. Welcome to you, all of you on safe, uh, Facebook. As you join us here at the Corner Church for the continuation of our service this morning on Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all you ladies out there. And we just give God glory and praise and thanksgiving for all of you. Uh, this morning as we continue in the Word and just uh, mentioned that, you know, we were just singing, you know, my mother's Bible. And, uh, of course, Proverbs uh, tells us, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And uh, the blessing of, you know, having loving, caring, and uh, Christian mothers is just, uh, you know, a blessing beyond, you know, measure. And we just give God glory and praise and thanksgiving for for all of that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we glorify you and we praise you this morning, Father. Father, as we just thank you, Father, for all things. And Father, it is only you, Father, that we can turn to in our hours of need, Father. And Father, as we just glorify you and praise you, Father, for all things this morning, Father, as we come to your word, Father, this morning, Father, we pray for your presence, Father, your Holy Spirit presence, Father, your enlightenment, Father, bringing forth truth and revelation knowledge, Father. And Father, this morning, as we come to your word, Father, Father, you know, we're going to be talking about mothers this morning, Father. Father, the blessings, Father, you know, of, you know, female. You, you, scripture says you made a male and female, Father. But, Father, you know, you had a special place from the beginning of creation for, Father, for each and every woman, Father, that has ever walked this world, walked this earth, Father. So, Father, God, Father, we just glorify you and praise you, Father, for, you, for your awesome eternal plan, Father. Father, beginning at creation and then for eternity. And, Father, we praise you and thank you, Father, above all things, Father, for that salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who shed his blood for the remission and forgiveness of our sins that we might have life, taking victory over death through the resurrection, that we might live in the resurrection each and every day as we continue to walk in this world until the day that you call us forth. But Father, on that day that you call us forth, Father, we pray, Father, not only for our own selves, Father, but for the world, because your word says that for, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Father, that is, you know, the hope of the world, Father, but as Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So, Father, speak through your word this morning, Father, as we glorify you, we praise you. Father, as I lift each individual up, spirit, soul, and body, you know the needs, physical needs, spiritual needs, Father, that we might walk in that wholeness, as Jesus told the one with the issue of blood, thy faith hath made thee whole. Father, we desire that this morning as we come to you. Father, I glorify you and praise you as I yield and humble myself to the leading of your Holy Spirit that may truly be your words and not mine. Through thy Holy Son, Jesus' name, Amen and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, in the beginning, you know, the scripture says, that, you know, in the beginning, you know, uh, Adam called his wife Eve for, you know, she was, you know, the mother of all living, you know. She was going to be the mother of all living. There was not one person uh, that was going to come into this world, you know, after Eve, you know, See, Eve is the only woman that's ever walked this earth that did not have a mother, you know. Eve did not have a mother. Isn't that something? Yeah. She's the only one. Of course, Adam's the only you know, man that ever walked this earth that did not, you know, have a mother. You know. And everyone since him has had a mother. Isn't that a blessing? So we glorify God and praise him that, you know, that we all have mothers, you know. Some of our mothers has passed on, you know, as we talked about earlier, you know. But what a blessing that is when, you know, when that, when that mother has passed on and without a shadow of a doubt, we know that she's with God in heaven, you know. We can glorify and praise God, you know. We can thank Him. I'm going to, uh, I, I don't, the Lord was changing scriptures in 
my mind, you know, being right moments before I left the house, so I don't really know where today's message is going to go. I don't plan on taking a long time because, you know, I know some people's got things planned for this afternoon. But I want to get something across. The thing that God wants each and every person to know that every mother, every woman, every lady, you know, every female is a special to God. And God has set females apart from all others, you know. It's the female that God uses to form in the valley each and every new person that will come into this world. The incubator, you know. That's awesome. Not one of us men can ever comprehend and understand the feelings, the love, even the heartache sometimes that mothers go through that men cannot ever realize, comprehend, or understand, you know. We respect all of you for that, you know. There were women in the Bible, and what I'm handing out to you this morning, and you know, that'll, that'll be good study material about the importance of women, you know, because there's all kind of women that God used in the scriptures. I've, I've got some study material of 21 women, 21 women, you know, that God used in mighty ways. Abigail, Deborah, Delilah, Esther, Eve, Hannah, Jael, Jezebel, Leah, Martha, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Jesus, Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, Mary Magdalene, Miriam, Rachel, Rahab, Rebecca, Ruth, Sarah, the Shunammite, the wife of Lot. Well, before I even get to the end of Genesis, after Eve, you know, of course, we had Sarah, and, you know, we had those others that was in there. There's a lot of them in there, Hagar, you know. God used for different reasons and purposes. But the one thing I want to show is Lot's wife is an example of not having faith and trust in the Lord. Lot looked back. I mean, uh, Lot's wife looked back and was turned to a pillar of salt. You know. She looked back on the past, Sodom and Gomorrah, with a desire to go there. But as I come into the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 1, we are going to go there. I want to read a little story about some women that never is given a name. We're never told who these ladies are, other than that they were midwives. But there's something extremely special about these ladies. Something that I see when I read the scriptures... As a, as a first of things happening in the Bible, and I'll get to that when we get there. Let's begin in verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake unto the Hebrew wise, of which the name of one was, I, I, we do, we, yeah, we do have some of two of them, Sapara, and the name of the other was Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him, but if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men's children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the women children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, but they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Therefore God dealt with them, the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed mighty. That was what uh, Pharaoh feared because the, the, the slaves, the, uh, the Israelites, was coming more 
powerful than the Egyptians themselves, you know. You know, they were multiplying so much, you know. And they were a strong people. Because they were strong people of faith and trusting in God. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, listen to that, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. That he made them houses. To me, that is the first specific reference to God bringing salvation to someone for trusting and fearing. The houses that he made, he didn't make them houses on land. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. You know, as it says there in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, verse 1, you know, that we have a house not made with hands, but by Jesus Christ alone in heaven, you know. And this is the first record. And here these ladies are because they followed the same principle that you will hear later when Peter tells, you know, the Romans or the Pharisees and, and uh, the priests and everything, when they were told not to preach about Jesus or anything. He said, it's better for us to obey God than man. There is something that God sets forth in the scriptures, the authority, and, I, and as Christians, we are to obey our governments. We even, as you know, we see with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they obeyed King Nebuchadnezzar and the rulers, except when their rulings and guidance was against God's commandments, against God's will. So when, when the government is against the will of God, here they were killing the boys. Parallel example, when our government supports abortion, we do not support that at all. And we rebel against that, just as these midwives did. Sometimes there's been discussion, did God reward them because they lied? No. He rewarded them for their faith and trust in him. In the very first time we, re re we understand God's will on this is in the Ten Commandments. What's he say? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. So here we have midwives that obeyed and followed the will of God. We sang that song earlier. Where he leads me, I will follow. I want to come back to that. If I remember the number. Is it 393? I can hear my Savior calling. Take that cross and follow me. I'll go with him through the garden. I'll go with him through the judgment. He will give me grace and glory. Where he leads me, I will follow. I will go with him all the way. Well, as I was, we were singing that this morning, that wasn't one of them that I was expecting to sing, but while we were singing that, then the Lord quickened scripture that we have for this morning, and that is in Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 1. It says, And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city, and this is while Jesus is doing his earthly ministry, went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, 
and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's servant, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. Jesus had many women following him. You can turn back to Matthew chapter 27. Throughout his ministry, these women were ministering, even ministering and caring for Jesus' needs. I'm thinking some of the caring and things like that was maybe, you know, even on the way while they were traveling would maybe wash some clothes, you know. Maybe we're, you know, with the fires, you know, cooking some food and, you know, feeding them, you know. They were supporting his ministry. They were with him. But in chapter 27, verse 55 and 56, that's now when Jesus is hanging on the cross at Calvary. And the vast majority of his disciples were nowhere to be found. They weren't. Yeah. John was standing there. But verse 55. While he's on the cross, and just after the scripture says that, you know, he had, you know, passed away. When the earthquake, the veil was ripped in two. Verse 55. And many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him. Among which was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and uh, Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. You know. And as I go through the scriptures, I see that there was many women, you know, around the cross. You know. Of course, scripture says that there were so many of the guards and everything else that was just surrounding immediately around there, you know. So they weren't, they weren't too close. But then, as Jesus even saw his mother when he you know, last word, you know, one of his last words. He spoke to his mother. Woman, behold thy son. You know, he spoke to his mother. The women were still there. Well, as I mentioned about these women that were in the scriptures, but even before we get to the scriptures, women have, throughout the history, have been Mighty individuals. All of a sudden, I just thought of Betsy Ross. The American flag that we pledge allegiance to. to uh, the first flag was designed by Betsy Ross, I think. Yeah. Forgot my history right. Throughout history, we see women. Do you know who the first prime minister of Israel was? Gold in my ear. Interesting thing about gold in my ears. She didn't start out with royalty or anything like that. She was a very common lady. Just tell you a few things about it. Gold in my ear was an Israeli stateswoman, politician, teacher, and uh, kibbutznik. I, my Hebrew is not very good. Who served as the fourth prime minister of Israel. She was born in Kiva. She emigrated to the United States. This was before Israel had been founded. She emigrated to the United States as a child with her family in 1906. She was an immigrant to the United States. But this is also comes in to show you some how closely the United States and Israel are related. And I, I, I constantly, you know, mention that. You know, you know, in God's plan, we are, you know. Classed together. She was uh, where there was disruption in the world, Kiev. You know, she immigrated in 1906, was educated there, became a, uh, uh, became a teacher. After getting married, she and her husband immigrated to then Palestine in 1921, settling on the kibbutz. Mir was elected prime minister of Israel on March the 17th, 1969 after serving as Minister of Labor and Foreign Minister, the world's fourth and Israel's first and only woman to hold the office of Prime Minister. And the first in our any country in the Middle East, she has been described as the Iron Lady 
of Israeli politics. I think of somebody else like Mother Teresa. Just a poor lady. You know, you could say a poor peasant lady that, you know, went into the, you know, uh, missionary field, you know, and had a heart for winning souls to Christ. When I go through that list that I'm going to hand out and give you some background on, you got a lot of scriptures that you can look up and even read about. It's, it's wonderful reading. Deborah was one of them. Deborah, she was a prophetess from uh, Israel. God uh, used her to reveal his will on matters affecting his people. She also used uh, he also used her to help settle problems among the Israelites. She was a judge. She was one of the judges during the period of Judges. I'm not sure, but I possibly, but I'm not sure, as I was reading about Goldie Meyer about being the fourth, I'm not sure that uh, Deborah wasn't the fourth uh, judge, but pretty close in, in that area there. You know. Of course, then, we've got others that, you know, God used them for a purpose, Delilah, you know, with Samson. But see, she didn't use, he didn't use her as an example of faithfulness, you know. He used her as the exact opposite. He used Esther in a very mighty way. Hannah, think of Hannah. Hannah was a woman that uh, was Samuel's mother. Samuel ended up being a priest and the last judge because Hannah was barren. And Eli, no, um, I forget her husband's name. Uh, he had two wives. The other wife had multiple children. Every time they would go up to do their offerings, she would really just rag on Hannah, you know, you don't have any children, you know. You're, you're worthless as a woman, you know. But praise the Lord, when you read that story about her then going into the temple that time and praying, and of course the priest thought she was drunk because her mouth was moving, but, you know, there was no words coming out. She was praying in the heart, praying in the spirit, you know. And uh, she said that, Lord, if you give me a son... I will bring him back to you that he might serve you all of his life. She prayed a Nazarite vow on him. Samson had a Nazarite vow on him, but, you know, God had placed the Nazarite vow on him. She prayed the Nazarite vow on him. And Samuel ended up being the mighty last judge because Samuel was the one that was used for my transition now from the judges to the kings because Samuel anointed Saul and then Samuel anointed David. And right from the beginning there we saw God's will and the parallel difference between Saul and David as a model of what God wants in government, you know. I can go on through this and, you know, you, you see Mary, the mother of Jesus, but, you know, look at Jezebel, how she used her life in a destructive way. Then you read by, turn to Matthew 1, 5, chapter 1, verse 5. In chapter 1, verse 5, it's the genealogy of Jesus, as we read in the Gospel of Matthew. And Salmon begat Boaz of Rechem, which is uh, I, I get the every time I try to pronounce it, uh, the, uh, the girl, it's you pronounce it, Rahab. Yeah, when you put that C in, Rahab is another spelling of Rahab. Rahab 
is the woman that hid the spies when they come in to spy out the promised land, Canaan. She was the only one in all of Jericho and her family because of her faith and trust that did not die when the Hebrews, the Israelites, crossed the Jordan River. She tied a red ribbon in her window. And when they came through, her family was all saved. But ultimately then, and how God orchestrates things, both women that are in this genealogy, in the same verse, is the ancestress of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Both of them were not Israelites. Rahab was a Canaanite that they went in to destroy. And now, keep going here, begat Boaz of Rahab, because that's the Hebrew spelling of it, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. No story about Ruth and Naomi? And Naomi left because of a famine in Israel, and they went to Moab to live. And her sons married Orpha and Ruth. And then when they, they uh, all, all of her sons and her husband had died, Naomi says, I'm going to go back to Israel now. And of course, the two daughters-in-law was going to go with him, but Orpha ultimately did not. But Ruth, in faithfulness, says, your God is my God. Your people are my people. She was a Moabite woman, which of all women, the Moabites, the women of the Moabites was the women that ended up teaching the Israelites about worshiping idols and all kinds of sexual sins. And yet, here, Ruth was among them. And Ruth ended up being the grandmother of David. God used women in mighty ways. Women are set apart by God for very, very special purposes. As you read about some of these, about everything, some background on Miriam and, and Rachel and Rahab and all of these, it'll be just some good Bible study for the week. Yeah. 21 special women that gives us both examples of godliness Faith and trusting. Faith and trusting. Just like those Hebrew women with Moses. Yeah. And all the, the young men that were being born into Egypt at that time. Disobeying the order to kill the baby boys and standing in faith. See, they were putting their own lives in danger by doing that. Rahab put her life in danger. She, you know, she trusted in faith and trust, you know, because had they found out what she was doing, she would have been history. But see, with God, all things are possible and nothing is impossible. As I was doing that devotional yesterday, focusing on women, I ended that devotional with some scripture out of Thessalonians. Let's turn to Thessalonians chapter 5. Because chapter 5 in Thessalonians is an excellent chapter. 1 Thessalonians. Starts out chapter 5. But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord 
so cometh as a thief in the night. We see so much of an example of how that is speeding up and coming at this very time. But as we continue there in verse 16, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearances of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless on the coming unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. And yesterday morning my thought process was this as I had been talking about loving, praying, and caring moms. And as I was Using that scripture, I was just envisioning that is that hymn, my mother's Bible. How many Christian mothers there are and have been in this world that a prayer similar to that that we just read what the Apostle Paul was telling young Timothy that so many mothers has had for all those children that they first had carried in their womb and then ultimately gave birth to their desire. Even as some of these women that we were just talking about, those Hebrew women, somebody like Mother Teresa, you know, godly women, And so even for those that are not godly, if we saw those examples, whether it be Delilah or Jezebel, you know, we see what not to be like. But with each and every person, there's hope. There's hope. And we just pray that at some point, they also will see the light and be that person that God desires for you to be, each and every one of us. Father God, we glorify you and praise you this morning, Father, as we've come to your word. Father, you've spoke through your word, and Father, through the examples of the lives of others this morning, Father. And we see the parallel ways. They start out and maybe seem parallel, but then they're just totally divergent. They go in different directions. Because we, each and every one of us has a choice to make. Like the Hebrew women. They chose to obey you, God. They chose to obey you. And Father, just as the you know, prophet in the scriptures tells us, choose you this day who you will serve. And when I ask for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Father, I pray this morning, Father, that that's the desire of each and every one at the hearing of my voice this morning. Father, we glorify you and praise you, Father, for that blessing. But Father, this morning, I just continue to pray your blessings, Father, on all people, but especially this today, Father, as we honor motherhood, we honor all of the female gender today. We praise you for them because you truly have set them apart for your service. So Father God, we praise you and thank you for salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We're gonna, as you're all on the altar of sacrifice, 390. Thanks for your
Praise the Lord, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid. A third uh, verse. Oh, we never can know what the Lord will bestow of the blessings for which we have prayed till our body and soul he doth fully control and our all on the altar is laid. Father God, we glorify you this morning, Father. And Father, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming forth from this time forth and even forevermore. Through thy holy Son, Jesus' name we pray as I pray your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Go in peace. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you.